I want to ask all of you today, what do you think? Can you or anybody else, can we play a part in God's divine plan? Or is that only for a select chosen special group of people? What do you think about that? That is something that we are gonna be taking a look at here in our Sunday School lesson this week, where again, our Sunday School lesson this week, it picks up with the story of Ruth. Ruth's story is going to be coming to an end for us here in our Sunday School lesson this week, where we have been following for the past couple of Sundays now, we have been following this young Moabitess Gentile woman, as she has not only found favor in the eyes of Boaz, as we saw in our Sunday School lesson last week, but we saw a woman in the first lesson that we had of Ruth, we saw a woman who committed herself to following Naomi. She clung to Naomi because Naomi was a woman of faith. On her worst day, Naomi turned to the Lord and Ruth saw something in that to where she decided that she was going to cling to Naomi. We saw a woman that not only clung to Naomi, we saw a woman who then committed herself to the people of Naomi, which was the Israelites. Not only did Ruth commit herself to the people of Naomi, she committed herself to Naomi's land, which was the land of Bethlehem, the land of Judea, again, the land of Israel. And then we not only saw that, we saw that, Na that Ruth said to Naomi that your God will be my God. She committed herself to the God of Naomi, our God today. She committed herself to the Lord. She committed herself to the way of God. And through all of that, we find that Ruth, she found favor in the eyes of God. Can you play a part? Can anybody play a part in God's divine plan? Ruth shows us that anybody can play a part in God's divine plan. That is what we're gonna see here in our Sunday School lesson this week, where our lesson, it opens up there in the fourth chapter of Ruth, taking a look at the first verse, where we'll see there Boaz was speaking with another relative of his and Elimelech. Now the question will be, why was Boaz having a conversation with another relative. We'll see there in the second verse that the discussion, it took place in the presence of 10 witnesses that Boaz had brought with him. He spoke with this relative, we'll see there, about a land that Naomi had possessed, but she had to prepare to let it go. She had to prepare to sell it. It was a piece of land that had belonged to her husband, Elimelech. And so Boaz, we'll see there, he spoke to this relative about redeeming the land, about purchasing, about buying back the land. Now this part about redeeming the land here from Boaz or from this close relative, that's actually part of the Mosaic law, the Kendrick redemption, if you will. It is part of the Mosaic law where one's kin would help them out if one was poor or was in need or if one had passed away. And, and again, possessions needed to be given up, possessions needed to be sold. We'll see over in the 25th chapter of the book of Leviticus, taking a look at the 25th verse, we'll see there where one's kin, again, if they became poor and had sold some possessions, a redeeming relative, a redeeming kindred, if you will, according to the law, could redeem, could get back that possession the redeeming relative essentially had first rights to those possessions that that was being sold away before anybody else a close relative would have the first rights at being able to redeem being able to purchase back those possessions we'll see there in the 28th verse what would happen if the redeeming relative was unable to get back those possessions scripture tells us that what was sold would remain in the possession of whoever had purchased it until the year of jubilee and then what was sold would be released and then returned to the initial, the original possessor. When we take a look back there at the first verse, uh, we, we should be able to understand that Boaz was talking to this relative because again, this relative, the other relative was actually closer to Elimelech. And so this other relative would have the first rights to being able to purchase back that, that possession. So we'll see there in the fifth verse that, that Boaz, he points out to this close relative there that when he buys Elimelech's field, he would also need to buy it from Ruth as well. He explicitly there points out Ruth's heritage there. Notice there that Boaz points out that Ruth is a Moabite woman. Now we're starting to get to the meat of, of our lesson here, okay? Sure, Boaz, he, he wanted this, this, this field that Elimelech that he had possessed, right? 
But as we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week, Boaz, he was starting to have an infatuation, if you will, with Ruth, right? He, he was starting to fall in love with Ruth. And, you know, we always, you often may hear about Ruth and Boaz, the love story of those two. And so we see here that Boaz, he points out Ruth, points out that she is a Moabite, points out that she is a Gentile woman, because again, he, that was his true desire. It wasn't necessarily the field that, that Naomi possessed of Elimelech's. His true desire was actually Ruth. And so when we take a look at the third chapter of Ruth and we take a look at the first verse, scripture, it shows us that Naomi desired security for Ruth. Now, Ruth, she was a, a very modest woman. Naomi, on the other hand, Naomi, if you can remember this, going back to the first lesson that we had about Ruth, when, when Naomi was preparing to go back to Bethlehem, she told both of her, both of her daughter-in-laws that, that they should return with her because Naomi had this desire that both of her daughter-in-laws, Orpah and Ruth, that they would return back to their mother's house, return back, you know, stay in their land so that they can find a husband and, and be able to find happiness in their life, be able to have a, a family of their own. So back in our Sunday school lesson last week, when, when Naomi noticed that, that Ruth and Boaz was seemingly getting along, that, that Ruth had found favor in the eyes of, of Boaz, you know, Naomi was noticing some things that Ruth, this modest young woman, wasn't picking up on. Naomi, she began over time to notice the infatuation that Boaz had with Ruth. And so Naomi had this desire for, for Ruth to, to find some security, uh, meaning security through, through marriage, if you will. And so we see here this, this scheme that, if you want to say scheme, that, that Naomi comes up with, with for Ruth here so that she can be married to, to Boaz. If you take a look there, at the third verse there in the third chapter of Ruth, we'll see that Naomi instructed for Ruth to put on her best garment. And then Naomi, she gave Ruth more instructions to start a process that would see Ruth make a claim for Boaz to be her kindred redeemer. And for her part, we'll see there in the ninth verse that Ruth, she followed the instructions and she made the claim to Boaz to be under his wing and for him to be her kindred redeemer. For a man that had made his desires very clear, Boaz would welcome being the kindred redeemer of Ruth. Ruth, on the other hand, like I said, she was a modest woman. I don't think that she was picking up on, on what Boaz was putting down, if you will. In fact, I don't necessarily know if Ruth was really looking forward to remarrying or had the idea in mind about remarrying. That was something that was, you know, it was something that was important for Naomi because again, just going back to the first lesson that we had about Ruth, we saw where Naomi had prayed that, that Ruth would find favor, that Ruth would be blessed through, through having a happy marriage and again, ha being able to have a, a happy family as well. And so security, that was something that was very important to, to Naomi. And again, for, for Ruth wanting to, to cling to Naomi as well, it, it, in a way it would turn out to be very important for her because again, you know, she didn't want to marry off into another family, right? And, and Naomi did not want that for her as well. And so again, she puts forth this plan, but there was one problem that we have already seen with this plan. As we'll see there in the 12th verse there in the third chapter of Ruth, there was that close relative that would have the first rights to her, again, to be the kindred redeemer. Now, it should make even more sense for us now why Boaz there in the opening of the fourth chapter roof, why he was speaking to that closer relative. Because again, Boaz, yeah, he may have desired that field. He already had a field of his own. He may have desired the possessions of Elimelech, but he had great wealth himself. What he did not have was a, ro a woman like Ruth. And that was what, that's what Boaz truly desired there. So when we take a look there at the scripture there, it makes more sense why he pointed out that Ruth was a Moabite woman. Because we'll see there in the sixth verse, after, after hearing that Ruth was a Moabite woman, the relative, he threw his hands in the air and he said to Boaz, I cannot redeem Elimelech's possessions. 
he feared that he would ruin his own inheritance, that he would ruin his own blessings. So the relative said to Boaz there in a verse, buy it for yourself. The relative, again, this relative, he didn't have any idea what Boaz really wanted, what Boaz really desired. In fact, I don't think that he even really cared that much for it. Again, when Ruth was brought up, this man said, you know, when it was the field, this man was like, okay, yeah, no problem. But when Ruth was brought up, again, her being a Moabite, her being a Gentile woman, the man, the man threw his hands in the air and just said, no way. Again, we have to remember what we have seen in, in our lessons over the past couple of weeks, the law that was mentioned over in the seventh chapter of Deuteronomy and the third verse, where again, the scripture, the law said there that the children of Israel, that they were forbidden from marrying the people in the land of Canaan, the Gentiles that were in the land of Canaan. Even more to that law is something that we find over in the 23rd chapter of Deuteronomy and the third verse, where we're told there in that scripture that the Ammonite and the Moabite were not supposed to be allowed to enter into the assembly of the Lord. So again, this close relative, he, he didn't want to break the law. He, he feared breaking the Mosaic law. That will raise the question, you know, somebody may wonder, well, did Boaz not fear breaking the, the, the Mosaic law? Did, Mo, did, did, did Boaz, did he break the Mosaic law? We, we may begin to wonder as well. The answer to that question would be no. It, he was actually doing what was according to the law to where again, he was supposed to redeem or he had the first rights, if you will, if that other relative, if that other relative wouldn't get the redeem the, the possessions of Elimelech, then it fell onto Boaz next. And so Boaz was actually keeping the law. He was actually being obedient to the law, even though Ruth was a Moabite, even though Ruth was a Gentile woman. It wasn't Boaz that was unlawful. It wasn't Boaz that was breaking the law. Again, we have to remember the way that Ruth ended up with where she was in the family of Elimelech was that Naomi's, their, their two sons, one of the sons had married Ruth, right? The son was the one who had the unlawful marriage. And so Ruth was now part of the possessions, if you will, of, of Elimelech because she was now part of his household. And so, Again, Boaz was not doing anything here that was unlawful. He was actually following the law, again, being the, the kindred redeemer there. So Boaz, we'll see there, he moved forward to, again, purchase the field, the possessions of Elimelech. And we'll see there in the ninth verse that, that he makes it openly to the witnesses that was present there as well as he openly announces exactly what he was doing there. And then in the last verse of our lesson there in the 10th verse, we'll see that he did the same with Ruth as well as he claims Ruth, acquiring her as his wife. We see there again that he served as her kindred redeemer. Now, again, like, like I've been saying, uh, she serves a key part in, in why you and I are saved today. All that we have discussed so far in our lesson, as far as the marriage of Boaz and Ruth, this doesn't seem like much of a big deal if you simply just glance at the story at, at how all of this took place. However, this marriage, again, it is very important, very key into how you and I are saved today, how those who may not be saved today have an opportunity to be saved today. How is that you may have been wondering this whole time? Well, in Matthew's gospel, the first chapter of Matthew's gospel, we'll see the lineage of Jesus there. And there are a couple of names that I want us to pay close attention to when we take a look at the fifth verse there. We'll see there in Jesus's lineage, we'll see that Salmon, we're told there, begot Boaz. That name sounds very familiar to us, right? Begot Boaz by Rahab and Boaz begot one who was named Obed by Ruth, okay? Two familiar names in the lineage of Jesus there, Boaz and the Moabite Gentile woman named Ruth. Even more, okay, we'll see there, that Obed eventually had a son as well. The son was named Jesse. Does that name seem familiar to you? If you know the story of David, you would know that name very well. Because again, we'll see there as we take a look at the, the, the scripture there, that this Jesse was the Jesse that was the dad, the father of King David. So Ruth was the great grandmother 
of King David. So again, ask the question at the start of this lesson today, can, can you or anybody else play a part in the divine plan of God? And like I said, for the past few weeks, Ruth is proof that God will use anybody, whether they were of Israel or a Gentile, it did not matter. God, he is more than willing to use anybody. Like I said in last week's lesson, anybody can find favor in the eyes of God. The way that you find favor in the eyes of God is you love him, commit yourself to, to him, be obedient, live according to his way, and you will find favor in his eyes. Ruth, again, this modest woman, was a Gentile woman, a Moabite woman, one who was forbidden, who should have not been able, been able to enter into the assembly of Israel. There she was, she was there. And again, we will see here that the Lord used her to be part of his divine plan. Look at the lineage of Jesus. Jesus has some very interesting people in his lineage with Ruth being one of them and then another. She doesn't get her shine here, but Tamar is another one as well. If you don't know Tamar's story, I would definitely recommend that you go look up that story. You talk about a soap opera, you have a soap opera uh, there in the story of Tamar. So again, God, he will use anybody, whether you are a sinner or the most righteous believer. If you, again, commit yourself to the Lord, you will be a vessel of his. I hope that that is something that you take out of the lessons that we have seen here with Ruth. You can find favor in the eyes of God. God can and will use you according to his purpose. Don't ever let anybody tell you otherwise. Scripture, again, the sound doctrine of the Lord is proof that you can, you can find favor in the eyes of God and that you can be used. You can be a vessel of his. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Be sure that you like this video and if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following this channel. Hit the alert bell as well so that you don't miss any notifications for the next video that we share here on the Newfound Faith YouTube channel.